I mean, I think the cryptocurrency thing is an interesting approach to reducing the um, error in the the database that is called money. Um, you know, I think I have a pretty deep understanding of the of what money actually is on a practical day to day basis because of PayPal. Um, you know, we really got in deep there. Um, and r- right now, the money system, actually, for you know, practical purposes, is 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 really a bunch of uh, heterogeneous uh, mainframes running uh, old COBOL. <laughs> okay, you mean literally? That's literally that, that literally what's happening in yep. batch mode. Okay, in batch mode. Yeah, and I pity the poor bastards who have to maintain that code. Okay, that's a that's a pain. That's pain. Not even Fortran. It's COBOL. Yep, it's COBOL. Like, and they still the ba- banks are still buying mainframes in 2021 and running ancient COBOL code, uh, and uh, you know the the Federal Reserve is like probably even older than the, what the banks have, and they have an old COBOL <laughs> mainframe. <laughs> and so now, the, and and so the, the the government effectively has editing privileges on the on the money database, um, and they use those editing privileges to. Um, make more money <laughs> whenever they want. And this increases the error in the database that is money. So if you, I think money should really be viewed through the lens of uh, information theory. And uh, and so it's uh, you know, kind of like uh, like an internet connection. Like what's the bandwidth, uh, you know, t- total bit rate? Uh, what is the latency, jitter, uh, packet drop, uh, you know, errors in, errors in the network uh, communication? Just think of money like that, basically. Um, I think that's probably the right way to think of it. And and then say what what system, uh, from an information theory standpoint, allows an economy to function the best, uh, and you know, um, crypto is an attempt to reduce the the error uh, in, uh, in in money that is contributed by uh, governments. Uh, Diluting the money supply uh, as basically a pernicious a pernicious form of taxation. So both policy in terms of with inflation and actual like technological cobalt like cryptocurrency takes us into the twenty first century in terms of the actual systems that allow you to do the transaction to store wealth all those kinds of things. Like I said, just in think theory. of money as information. People. Um, often will think of money as having power in and of itself. Um, it does not. It, money is uh, is information, and it, it does not have power in and of itself. Uh, the, like the, you know, again, applying the the physics tools of thinking about things in the limit is helpful. If you are stranded on a tropical island um, and uh, you have a trillion dollars, it's useless. Because there's no there's no resource allocation. Mon- money is a database for resource allocation, but there's no resource to allocate except yourself. So money is useless. Um, uh, if you're stranded on a desert island with no food, you uh, all the Bitcoin in the world will not stop you from starving. Yeah. So. Um, so, like, just just think of money as as a database for resource allocation um, across time and space, and um, and then what 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 system uh, it, it is what what in what form should that that database or data system what 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 would be most effective? Now, the, the, there's a there is a fundamental issue with um, say Bitcoin in its current form. Uh, in that it's the transaction volume is very limited, um, and uh, the latency it's, it's the, the latency for for a properly confirmed transaction is too is too long, much longer than you'd like. So it's not it's actually not great from um, a transaction volume standpoint or a latency standpoint. Um, uh, so it is perhaps useful as. As to so, to solve an aspect of the money database problem, uh, w- which is the sort of store of wealth or an, an accounting of relative 
obligations, I suppose. Um, but it is not useful as a currency, as a day-to-day -day currency. But people have proposed different technological solutions. Like Lightning. Little, yeah, Lightning Network and the Layer 2 technologies on top of that. I mean, it's it's all, it seems to be all kind of a trade-off. But the point is, it's kind of brilliant to say that just think about it, information, think about what kind of database, what kind of infrastructure enables the yeah, exchange so say, of like you're operating an economy, um, and you need to have some thing that it, uh, allows for the efficient, to, to, to have efficient uh, value ratios between products and services. So you've got this massive number of products and services, and you need to, you, you can't just barter. barter. <laughs> it's just like, that would be extremely unwieldy. Uh, so you need something that gives you the the a, 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 a ratio of exchange between goods and services, um, and and then something that allows you to uh, shift obligations across time, like debt, debt and equity shift obligations across time. 